Barack Obama out with a patriotic plan to keep companies from shipping jobs overseas. But is that really unpatriotic? Well, hello, everyone. I'm Cherry Keenan. Welcome to Cashin' In. Let's get the stock smarts. Cashing in crew this week, Wayne Rogers, Jonathan Honig, and Dagan McDowell, along with Jonas Max Ferris. And we're also joined by syndicated columnist Ben Shapiro. He is the author of Project President, Bad Hair and Botox on the Road to the White House. And welcome, everybody. Well, Democratic presidential hopeful Senator Barack Obama unveiling what he calls his patriotic employer's plan. It would give incentives to companies that keep jobs right here in America. But, Jonathan, you say this is all very unpatriotic from your home yeah. state. Senator. Yeah, it is, Terry. I mean, the role of the president isn't to protect American jobs, but to protect American rights. And that includes the right to free trade. I think a company has every right to hire any employee they want, even if it's a low cost foreigner. And they don't owe an American a job just because we all happen to live under the same government. Wayne? Do you agree? <laughs> to a certain extent, yes. You know, I love my friend Jonathan. He, he, he comes at you right, right through the front door. No, I, I, I think he's right in this respect, yes. That nobody, nobody has the right to, to, to uh, when you say an offshore job, to penalize an American corpora corporation for hiring people overseas. That's nuts. It's a world market. We better get used to it. We're going to have to compete in the world market. We're going to have to compete on the labor front as well as on the, on the financial front. So we've got to do that. Now, it is something to say, okay, to give them a tax break to incentivize them to go overseas. I think that's wrong. The tax break, if they should do, should be to stay in America. That part is true. But you cannot discriminate about this. I Wayne, I totally agree with you. It's one that, it, and by the way, Barack Obama sounds just like Hillary Clinton, who say, and they both sound just like John Kerry. If he wants to cut corporate taxes across the board in this country to make sure corporations stay here, that is a fabulous idea. However, it, you have to worry about it. It's so easy nowadays, worldwide, a company can just pick up. It doesn't have to be located here in the United States. That's the, the danger that we drive businesses, American businesses, out of America. Yeah, I mean, Ben, wouldn't this be a nightmare to implement, why not just cut corporate taxes right across the board? I think that's exactly right, and I think that the, the key to this plan is that he's only talking about cutting the corporate tax rate 1%. I mean, this is not the sort of thing that's going to really incentivize Americans to stay in America, particularly when that's supposed to be balanced out by the fact that they have to be union neutral, uh, that they have to up their health care spending, uh, that they have to spend more on, on you know, different initiatives. Uh, that kind of stuff is not going to be counterweighed by 1% corporate tax rate. Yeah, I mean, Jonas, it's, it's like giving a lollipop to employers who can really cut their costs in half by moving jobs overseas, but there's no, it's no coincidence that Barack is making this pitch in Ohio. He needs to win that state. How do you think it'll play? Well, it, it, it will play well because I think a lot of American voters think that there's like this giant pool of government cash that they're handing out to corporations to move jobs abroad. I mean, the real reason these jobs are going abroad is it is cheaper labor-wise to be abroad. There's less regulations, there's less OSHA, there's less unions. So there's a lot of reasons for that until those... Well, there's also a lot of customers abroad now, too. Right, and that's another, that's another thing. So I think it's a little bit of a delusion how much the government plays a role in this, this, this outsourcing of jobs, yeah, essentially. And I, think, all, and I think Obama, all... to his point, kind of talks more about... He kind of knows he's not much he can do about it. He even says it's globalization, we can't do much about it. I'm for lowering corporate tax rate for any ra irrational reason at all, so I don't really care about the, this plan being so bad for corporate America necessarily. John Jonathan? Yeah, well, uh, Terry, we, we, we should want governments, and we should want governments to stay out of the business of regulating companies at all. And I know Wayne's got some tax plan he wants to, to dream up to, I guess, not regulate, but incentivize certain type of behavior. Again, I think Obama should be getting out of the picture. And if a company can hire, you know, a Mexican guy for 10 times cheaper than an American guy, he should hire the Mexican guy. That makes the company more productive, more wealth is created, and that's where wealth comes from. That's what we should be incentivizing, you, not but, privileging certain classes, the auto workers, the steel workers. My my God, let the cars be made in South Korea. They're, they're, they're good cars. But you, you know what, Wayne, this is, this is not the direction that Barack Obama, your guy, is moving in. I mean, he outlined a whole series of plans, which I think add up to $800, $900 billion. 
He, he's not going to get an A in economics, that's for sure. <laughs> Barack is not, I hadn't thought this one through too well, I don't think. I think he's way off course on this one. But, you know, uh, Jonathan raised a point about the automobile industry. There's a perfect example of where automobile, the automobile industry in the United States has totally changed. Now not only are, do, we, do we make automobiles overseas, overseas manufacturers have come to the United States mm -hmm. and are building plants in the United States and are manufacturing what we think of as foreign cars right here in the United States. States are outselling U.S. companies, etc. If we can't compete, we can't compete. There's nothing to do about it. You can't do that with tax incentives. You can't do that with anything that's false and impose it on the economy. The market is what it is, and the market will determine that, and that's what should and, happen. But we do, but when we do have to, as a country, come up with a way to help retrain people and fix the situation and help people, former workers, current workers, cope with trade and technology. And I, well, well I would. I, I would agree with that. Yes, you're right. You, you can't, if you're going to destroy, that is, if an industry moves out and you've left a town that is bereft of, of jobs and everything, yes, retrain those people, try to get them other jobs, try to put them in a different business. But you can't impose a false economic model on something that is just not going to work. There, and is there, but there, to there's some truth in what he's saying. For example, corporations who leave profits abroad, they can just keep them there and not have to pay U.S. taxes here. There's also a problem. We have a certain regulatory environment here, and then you avoid it when you go abroad. And what the politicians should be talking about is making a level global playing field, both in taxes, a global tax rate possibly, yep. and also one where they have to but, follow the same rules they would here. But, Jonathan, how come Americans can make cars in a Toyota plant here in the U.S., and they can be shipped over to Europe and Toyota? Toyota can just make boatloads of money, and GM and Ford can't. Well, you know, I think... Same the, American the, workers. Uh, well, the, a lot of the unions, I think, are behind that, Terry. All I know is that my family had a Buick growing up. It was in the shop, like, every six months. Okay. I've had a Honda for 10 years. It never breaks down. All right. Okay. I'm glad you're still driving it. <laughs>